How does $20 million in gold bars and millions more in cash just disappear from an airport warehouse in Toronto? Canada's biggest airport was the scene of a multi-million dollar heist of gold and other valuables. So the loot was actually inside a cargo container and it vanished shortly after it was unloaded from a plane. This is something out of a movie. Police barely say anything. They spend a full year investigating and then this morning, the whole thing blows wide open. We have arrested nine people, issued three Canada-wide arrest warrants and have laid 19 related charges. And as you will hear, we've interrupted the transportation of a large quantity of firearms intended for import here into Canada. So now we're talking gold, cash, and guns. We also learned this was an inside job. Air Canada employees were in on it. And the method, exactly how they pulled off the single largest gold heist in Canadian history, one of the biggest in the world, it was devastatingly simple. Let me explain. So I'm going to tell you the story as best as I can piece it together from court documents, on police news conferences, and our own reporting. It starts in Switzerland. A precious metals refinery has 6,600 gold bars weighing 400 kilograms. That's like the weight of a horse or a grand piano, but in gold. It wants to ship these gold bars to TD Bank in Toronto. We know this because they're listed as the consignee on the way bill. At around the same time, a Swiss bank is trying to ship cash. Various currencies, various denominations, amounting to around $2.5 million Canadian to a Vancouver currency exchange. Both companies reach out to Brinks, the armored car guys, to handle the shipment. Brinks reaches out to Air Canada, books a flight. Within days, both shipments are on their way from Zurich to Toronto on Air Canada Flight 881, both apparently in the same shipping container. The flight lands the same day it took off, April 17th, 2023, touchdown at 3.56 p.m. As per normal procedure, the aircraft was unloaded and cargo was transported from the aircraft to a holding cargo facility. So Air Canada still has the goods. But then, and this is the big moment here, within 45 minutes of being deposited at that warehouse, a driver shows up in one of these big five-ton trucks, backs into the facility, hops out. He's got a waybill, which authorizes him to claim the shipment, except it's not for the gold or cash, it's for seafood. A shipment of seafood that had, in fact, already been claimed the day before. An Air Canada attendant takes the waybill, looks at it, hops in a forklift, grabs the container holding all the gold and cash, loads it into the truck, and the driver leaves. $22.5 million richer. Now, this doesn't make any sense, right? And if you read the statement of claim where Brinks is suing Air Canada for losing its cargo, they were also wondering, what the hell, you guys? No security protocols or features were in place to monitor, restrict, or otherwise regulate the unidentified individual's access to the facilities. They go on to say that Air Canada staff neglected to ask basic questions, made no attempt to verify the waybill's authenticity in any way, and that the theft could have been entirely avoided. The answer turns out there were two men on the inside, a manager and a warehouse employee. This waybill, yeah, it was phony. Yeah, it was for seafood, seafood that no longer existed in the warehouse, but maybe that didn't matter. It was just a piece of paper that looked official because in a way it was a duplicate copy printed off on an Air Canada printer. The driver presents it to the Air Canada employee. That employee delivers the gold and cash. The way police tell the story, this wasn't incompetence. This was everything going according to plan. When the real Brinks truck shows up three hours later, Air Canada employees try to find the shipment, except it's gone. Six hours after that, they're like, damn, it's really gone. They call police and the investigation begins. What follows is a lot of good old fashioned police work. They canvass hundreds of homes and businesses, literally going door to door, looking for any video, any witness accounts that might be helpful. And they managed to piece together after the fact what happened 
when the truck left the Air Canada facility. Westbound on Britannia, southbound on Dixie, westbound on Highway 401. The truck stays on that highway for about 45 minutes, heads north at Milton, but there it becomes more rural. Fewer cameras, fewer witnesses, police lose the scent, but not for long. Dozens of interviews and search warrants later, they pick up the trail. They're pretty sure they know who the driver is. They can't find him, but they find the truck. They also find these bracelets, which police believe is what the thieves turned some of that stolen gold into. They're almost pure gold, worth $89,000, smelted using these casts and molds. They also find a paper trail, about $430,000 in Canadian cash. Perhaps, they say, the profits made by selling some of the gold, and they make several arrests. Amit Jalota, Ahmad Chowdhury, Ali Raza, Prasath Paramalingam, and Parampal Sidhu. He was, allegedly, one of the Air Canada employees working on the inside. Police are still looking for Simran Preet Panazar, that is allegedly the other Air Canada employee working at the time of the theft, Archit Grover, and Arsalan Chowdhury. But if you're counting, that's eight people. Who and where was the ninth? This case started last September with a late night traffic stop by the Pennsylvania State Police after a keen trooper noted some minor uh, motor vehicle violations. It was a bit of luck that police in Pennsylvania, about halfway between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, ended up stopping the driver of a rental vehicle last September. That driver, police say, was the same man who drove the truck used in the gold heist, Durante King McLean from Brampton. The driver, Durante King McLean from Ontario, was illegally in the United States and fled on foot when troopers discovered the firearms in his rental car. Police found 65 guns in that car, and authorities say those guns were heading to Canada. One of those firearms had an obliterated serial number, 11 of them were stolen, and two of them were converted to fully automatic machine guns under United States federal law. King McLean is still in American custody, has been for months. He apparently could face up to 35 years in jail. But this is where our story both ends and begins, in a way. Police repeat at one point, over and over again, that this isn't just the story of a one-off gold heist. It's the story of organized crime, expanding its reach, expanding its power. The reality of crime today and the criminal networks that we see is they do not specialize. So you take profits from one criminal venture and then invest them into others. It's not just the theft of cargo. Uh, this is a dotted line to people's well-being anywhere in, these in this country, wherever those firearms ended up. Police believe the proceeds of that gold heist paid for weapons like this. Right now, they're still working on tracking down the rest of the money. But they admit gold, once it's melted down, can become anything. So gold is uh, fairly unique where there's no DNA in gold. So if you change the, from a, a solid state, you were to melt it down and put it in a different state, uh, it's very, very difficult for us to tell if it's from the, the same one. So we believe the gold has been melted down and reconstituted into local and possibly international markets. Uh, it can be done, unfortunately, fairly easy. And that's what we're trying to find out. So $89,000 in bracelets aside, there's still nearly the full $20 million outstanding. They don't know where it is, what it's been spent on, or whether they'll get any of it back. 